Hey Scott, I was reading your latest article on um, emergency crike practice or emergency surgical airway practice and saw that you'd incorporated 3D printing into the um, resources that you were using to make up the task trainer, which I think is great because 3D printing is something that's been coming along the last couple of years and I know Laura Duggan's involved with it. There's also people like Kieran McKenna in Northern Ireland, Andy Buck in the Northern Territories of Australia, and a friend of mine, Ryan McMullen, down in Victoria, who's been exploring 3D printing. And I've been doing a bit of it here in New South Wales as well. Um, I think 3D printing is a really useful tool, particularly for us uh, in critical care, where we're trying to make um, trainers, task trainers, and certainly buying consumables can be pretty expensive. But with 3D printing, um, it's actually relatively cost efficient to try to be able to replace those consumables. And it, there's also different materials that are available on the market now. So certainly, you know, when you're talking about an IO trainer, you can make that out of PLA and it's nice and hard, um, ready for taking that IO cannula in. Um, and for something like an emergency surgical airway trainer, depending on how you set up the print, you can use flexible materials such that you know the cartilage is still relatively firm um, and has the landmarks that you need it to have uh, but the soft bits are still soft so you know for instance that trachea there it's still compressible so if you press too hard you can actually uh, you can actually occlude it um, and it can add just that extra element of realism into your into your part task trainer but not everybody has a 3d printer or is able to access one and just for fun this is a part task trainer that I actually had a look at previously when I was starting up in 3D printing and just kind of off the off the bat for fun I'd actually made one out of a cardboard roll which is something that everybody does have access to um, and so it's fairly quick to make uh, you can you can get people to sit down at a workshop and actually make their own laryngeal cage and I think it helps because it gives you some ideas to the anatomy that you're about to tackle um, rather than just getting a piece of plastic stuck in you and uh, stuck in front of you and get going with the scalpel. So I'm just going to do it quickly here and just show you what, what I did. Basically this is the map that we're going to use. So this portion down here will end up being the trachea. This ring in the middle will end up being the cricoid ring. And we're going to do a little bit of cutting an origami to make the thyroid cartilage. Um, but it should turn out to be a laryngeal cage. That's not far off looking like this. All right, let's have a crack. I'm not going to map it out here. I'm just going to get cutting. But essentially we cut all the way up the front to near to the top. And then we cut a little bit down again from the top. All right. Then we come down a little bit and cut straight out about halfway around, straight out about halfway around and do the same on the other side. And that is ultimately going to be the cricoid ring. So now we've made our cuts, time to get folding and taping. So I'll bring in a bit of sellotape. I don't know what you guys call it over there, sticky tape, sellotape. So we're going to take that cut that we made, fold it right over and tape it down. Hopefully this will stick properly. All right, and that ideally should be the trachea. It's a bit big, but I'm going a little fast here. It could take some time and do it properly. This next bit that we're going to fold down and tape in place is ultimately going to turn out to be the cricoid ring. I'm not folding it down quite as much because I want it to be a bit more prominent than the trachea itself so that it's something that you can palpate when you put it under your bit of gauze or um, uh, soft dressing to simulate skin. Okay, hopefully this uh, tape will stick. Might put a little bit on the inside as well. If I can reach it. No, I probably can't reach it. Okay, we'll leave that. So now we've got a trachea. We've got a cricoid ring. Next thing to do is do a little bit of origami folding. 
I actually probably want to fold it over a bit more. There we go. Grab our tape. Stick it over. And now you've got that beginnings of that laryngeal prominence, the thyroid cartilage prominence. I'll fold this right over and in. Okay. So now you can see we've got our trachea, cricoid ring, cricothyroid membrane will go in there, and the thyroid cartilage. And if you lie it on its side, again you've got trachea, cricoid ring, thyroid cartilage with its prominence, so you can certainly feel up and you'll be able to get that cricothyroid membrane. Again, a bit of tape across the front like you did, put a bit of gauze over the top, and you've pretty much got your own. Do it in under a minute, make your own laryngeal cage to practice to practice your emergent, emergency surgical airway. Okay, enjoy that, and uh, thanks for the great work. See you, Scott. Bye.